Are you ready? Let's, let's have some fun. Let's do it. All right, okay. So first thing I always do anytime I bring someone into the office is just allow you to introduce yourself. However you want okay. to do it, whether it's long or short, it's all on you. Hmm. Yeah, I know. It can, it can make you but think, right? But it's up right? to me, yeah, It yeah. could be simple. Some people are like, yo, my name is XYZ. Yeah. And, well, then I, and I wait, and then that's it. So it's all it's all dependent on you. I think probably like the easiest way I introduce myself just initially is just I'm Denzel James from Edmonton, Alberta. It's probably like the that's, easiest That's way. a nice, yo, yeah. we go way back. Yeah. It's crazy because I don't think we've ever talked on camera. We've never, we've never actually talked on camera before ever. Yeah. Because we didn't have cameras like that at GMAC. We also, I feel like I've never really spent too much time one-on-one. Yeah. especially since gmac that's true so that's that true into it for um sure. but i first met you when you were 18 years old you came in like uh i don't, I don't know like bright eyes like the right terminology <laughs> to use but i think you were just like you were a kid you came in i don't even think you knew what was really happening in a sense you just knew you were coming to hoop and you're coming to have a good time yeah and that's like what happened yeah that's actually crazy <laughs> now that i think back to it i honestly didn't know what i was doing like i honestly just wanted to play basketball yeah um i think for part of it like i knew you know the route that i wanted to go after which is obviously pro basketball but anything outside of that realm no idea just kind of learning the ropes so yeah you spend the full five years so for those who don't know g mac is grant McEwen. Mm -hmm. a lot of people are gonna know what we're talking yeah. about that's where we played like basketball together you played a full five years there mm -hmm. what was that like what i mean is the staying <clears throat> in the same place yeah. for five years and playing finishing your whole basketball collegiate career there yeah to be honest with you it was weird in the sense where <laughs> staying for somewhere so long like becomes home to you and i think the relationships i created with you some other teammates like tommy um keith like the ogs the, the ogs yeah. right like there's so many relationships there's a sense of security home that you create there that i fell in love with but at the same time right basketball wise aspiration wise there's a certain aspect of me that I always kind of like thought about leaving just to try and like chase something else chase mm -hmm. you know like the possibility of winning more or um just growing out of my comfort zone stuff like that but loyalty at the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> loyalty at the end of the day man hey i'll i'll never forget bro i don't mean to bring up bad memories yeah. well so first of all we had a lot of funny memories i'm gonna say that first we did um and uh <clears throat> some of the funniest memories were like were you in the locker room just like <laughs> you know and you know <laughs> acting a fool the best video bro is the zombie video yeah you remember that yeah, right yeah uh, i'm gonna try to pull it and see if we can pull it up on the screen like for my editor but bro that was like the most classic video that summarized you in a nutshell mm -hmm. for all five years i knew you mm -hmm. just like on the court you were like a beast on the court like just different but as soon as basketball was done bro <laughs> anything off court bro you were so funny and yeah. then um i remember like D david and, like other guys like started like feeding off that energy too and mm -hmm. we just became like it just felt like the goofiest team ever but it was a like, hilarious yeah no I, I i i don't know i feel like my whole entire life like the basketball side of me is very very different like obviously as you know like that's where i get frustration out that's where i get my hunger out that's where i get so many of my just who i am mm -hmm. out of me that's how i express myself but then the second i'm done with that it's like okay well like why am I taking life so serious? You know what I you mean? You flip a switch yeah, completely, yeah, yeah. which is good. Um, and it's funny because now actually I feel like there's so many different parts that now I look back on that sometimes and I'm like, wow, like it's so interesting how I instinctively do that. I don't just choose to do that. Like sometimes it just happens, right? So that's kind of the cool part to it. So the bad memory I wanted to bring up mm -hmm. was, uh, I don't remember if it was first year or second year, mm -hmm. but it was that playoff game. Bro, <laughs> you know it's crazy like yeah. obviously i was just on the bench so i'm just chilling regardless but mm -hmm. like that still hurts me to this day bro the red deer one yeah bro. The red deer one, man. I, don't, hit, I don't forget those or ones. Is it hit the half court shot yeah uh, okay so the, the reason i say that not to bring up a bad memory but like in the last in those five years mm -hmm. was that like the heartbreak moment or was there another one that surpassed that uh the u of a game for sure the okay U, the u of a one yeah. for sure um that was a bad memory. I, I'll, I'll never forget it. Uh, I still think to this day, there's you know things that we could have done differently down the stretch, obviously, right? Uh, myself included. But I think when I look back at the whole five years, you know where we came from, ACAC moved into CIS, exactly. U Sport. Now there's a certain level of like competitive drive that we had as the you know the young school McEwen going up against U of A, mm -hmm. and losing in game three by one point at the buzzer. It that never, one never that, sits well. That one probably hurts the most. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. <laughs> Throughout the whole five years, for sure. That one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and obviously, after you finish five years, mm -hmm. wait. Let me just maybe I don't know if you want to talk about this, but I'm pretty sure you broke a couple of records 
at yeah. GMAC, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Was it like the was it points? I broke the scoring record for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I had any others, but okay. the scoring record for sure, yeah. Did that mean anything to you? No, we didn't win. <laughs> so like, it, like it's That's cool. Respect, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's cool like yeah. to look back on, but at the end of the day, we didn't win anything, right? Like as a true competitor, it's just it's just yeah. a record, but yeah, you want to you kind of want what every NBA guy says. You like it's cool yeah. to have accolades and yeah. be an all star, but mm -hmm. like you didn't get the chip. Yeah, and and like that's kind of my point too. Is like I stayed there for five years, right? I stayed there for five years. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved it. And again, the relationships that I created were awesome. But I won't lie, as if there wasn't like a small snippet of me that thought you could possibly go somewhere else and get that win. Right. Right. And that to me, at the end of the day, like that's something I have to live with. That's just you know it is what it is. That's how the cards played out. Yeah. But you look back, and again. I have a nice little cool plaque that tells me that I broke the scoring record, but what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah, it's just like, a, yeah, so. It's a good way to look at it as yeah. a true competitor. Um, so you finished your five years mm -hmm. playing collegiate, then mm -hmm. obviously you played pro a little bit. Can you give us a breakdown of just how the pro career went and where you played? Yeah, I spent my first two years in Ontario, uh, Kitchener-Waterloo. That was probably like the biggest eye-opening slash uh, just like best time of my life in terms of basketball style, especially as a kid when you grow up especially where I came from, you grew up and, you know, you have aspirations to play pro basketball. Of course. Right? And <clears throat> you get there and there's now professional athletes who have been in that field for five plus years, six plus years, and they're dogs. Yeah, like, they don't different. care. Yeah. They don't care, yeah. right? And then you go from, again, right, as I said, I went from the security, you know, relationships, friends all around me, comfortable being the man, like just all those kind of things to now, I went in there understanding I'm probably not going to be the man. I'm probably not going to have things as sweet as I did. Right? right. So I was okay with the grind. But then you now realize you're not playing basketball just for basketball, just for the passion. You're also playing for a check. Yeah. For for livelihood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and I think the biggest eye-opening thing for me is I'm very fortunate. I came from Canada. Some people from the States that I played with, they come from a place that like all that's their only way out. Like that's their only yeah. way out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Different like, mentalities. That's, that's just, it's, it's, it's just different. It's yeah. just different. And so it like, it makes you learn very, very quickly that one, you can have no doubts. You can have no doubts. Right. And so even for me, that switch that I have, not being able to control that switch sometimes became like a problem mm -hmm. because they always had it on. Right. So you had to learn that very, very quickly. Yeah. <clears throat> right. And then I'd say uh, my second year, I got a lot more comfortable. Second year, I started to like become more of myself. Okay. Uh, first year was pretty difficult just in terms of we lost a lot of games and, and this like, was what this wasn't cebl was it no it was the nbl nbl okay yeah. nbl yeah yeah we lost a lot of games my first year like i'm talking <laughs> 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 i can't even say the number to be honest with you we lost a lot of games though okay and uh you know you go back and you and you recognize okay well if we're losing a lot of games how can i still get better how can i still improve to come back next year better mm -hmm. right like something has to change whether it's the coach whether it's the players whether it's myself right something has to change the crazy thing about pr playing pro especially when you're not home is when you come home the relationships that you've created the 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 family that, that you have everything's different when you come back so people don't tell you about that okay right? people don't tell you about the fact that like when you come back not that it's a bad thing but people obviously if they if they no longer play basketball they move on with their life in a professional aspect right okay yeah right? whereas you're still in that same boat it's not a bad boat it's just different yeah now again to kind of like circle back to it my second year i go back and now i'm like a lot more comfortable now that's becoming my home that's becoming my 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 safety place right so we actually got to semi-finals that year my second year and it was a lot better had a lot more fun and then in the summer that's when they started the cbl which is now obviously as you know like right growing it's crazy now. it's crazy right now yeah crazy it showed me in my first couple of years, there's such a huge aspect to basketball in the professional level that I wasn't used to, that I had no idea was even a thing like right. just, you know, then it became, okay, well, you're not just playing for money. You're now playing for passion, money, and you're playing for just the fact that like, this is what you've done your whole life. Like, this is who you know, this is what you are, right? And then my third year, probably actually not even probably, that was my, like, honestly, the best year I had in my life. That so the third year was CEBL. Spain. Yeah. Oh, Spain. Spain. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing those highlights. Yeah. And uh, Spain was a whole different aspect, man. Right. I was across the world. <laughs> like, yeah, seriously. Across That's like the really world. pro, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. And like like that to me was like, I don't, I don't want to discredit the things that I experienced in my first two years. But I was living in Toronto. I was two hours away. Yeah, it's right? not far. The time difference was two hours. I could still talk to my friends, talk to my family if I needed to. Right. And then as I said, like 
my teammates were all either Canadians or Americans. They all spoke English. Right, so like at the everything end of the day, was familiar. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's all familiar for me. Yeah. So like, even though I'm growing out of my comfort zone, I'm still in like this 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 bubble. Mm -hmm. And go to Spain, and I don't speak the native language. Like I know a little bit from yeah. like junior high. I, you high know school, you know I, know, I know you, bro. Right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> I, I, have, I have family over there, so like I've 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 experienced it. But it's like a whole different level when you go there, and like no one speaks English, bro. Mm -hmm. Like no one. Yeah. These are certain aspects that like I think people don't tell you about but it's but it's it's the reality yeah right so like when you think of spain what do you think of i just think of the food and the drinks bro mm -hmm. i think of the culture to be mm -hmm. honest the culture because it's so different from here mm -hmm. that's what i experienced when we just went there yeah yeah you know um if i was to tell you for example like hey you got a contract for you to go play in spain again like what are you thinking of like yo the first thing i'm thinking is what you just said is like I don't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like everything else would be cool though, but I don't speak Spanish. Right. And if I was to tell you again, like the weather conditions, your living conditions, what do you think of? <sighs> that's a good question. I feel like that's a good question, bro. See, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't even know. Exactly. I would probably mm -hmm. just, so this is probably what happens to pro players. I, I, I'm curious if it happened to you. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would just be like, like a call comes in. Mm -hmm. You want to come to Spain? And I would just be like, because I don't know anything. I would just be like, yes. Exactly. And I would just pull up. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, that's so. exactly how it happened. Yeah, right? Exactly. Okay. Like I had a week to plan, a week to a week to pack my stuff. A week. Like a week. That's insane. Like I like to the point where I remember it very, very well. I think it was like the beginning of August. And I got a call from my agent. Hey, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to go to Spain? I got a contract for you. I'm not gonna say no, it's Spain. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, and it's I mean it's paid, it's yeah, money, it's like right? yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, fly out to Spain and land in Madrid at the time. And so the crazy thing for me was like, again, when I think about that, I don't know if I ever told you this, but since I was like a child, like eight years old, it's literally on like one of my, you know, those, you know, those like projects that you create in school. Yeah. Yeah. Has your, you know, like your photo on it. And yeah. then, you know, like oh, it tells you what you want to be or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like what you want to be. And then a couple sections, like, um, from, from your classmates, like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I like Denzel because dot, oh, dot, okay. Dot. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, like just, just those small little like kid stuff. Um, on that, like one of the goals I had when I was eight years old was playing in Spain. That's super random and crazy. Like wild. Yeah. Wild the fact that me. you would think about that. Yeah. Is yeah. You know, and so like, again, as I said, like I've, I've had family there. And so I've been to Spain prior to this, like spent summers there, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So like my first mind, like the first thing I thought of was like, this is what you've been dreaming of. You have family there. Like there's things that you can do there. Like, like you, you somewhat know the culture. You somewhat know certain mannerisms, stuff like that. Right. right. Anyways, get off the plane. Take a, I think, four hour, five hour bus ride. I'm living in this farm town, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. But I'll tell you why it was crazy, though. Because at the end of the day, again, Edmonton, Alberta, Kitchener, Waterloo, it's like 40 minutes from Toronto. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cities, cities, cities. I have all my friends comfortable, like speaking to people, right? I moved to this small farm town where. Like, I don't know, like, you've, you've been to Spain, like, yeah. all, all the apartments are tiny, bro. Yeah, yeah, we noticed tiny, that. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, and, like, it just, it's it's eye-opening to you because you realize there's such a different aspect of the world that we have here in Canada mm -hmm. that is, like, we're just privileged. We're just, we're just very, very, very privileged, right? That's the best way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I went there, and the reason I think it was, like, the best year of my life is because it humbled me in so many aspects of, like, there's more to life. Like there's more to life than just basketball. There's more to life than just like the things that I've dreamed of doing, planned of doing. And that was like weird for me because I was in, in the midst of playing my passion, like fulfilling my dream, I'm also going through like, whoa. You're seeing like- different things in life, man. Right. Like some of these people here, they're living in a farm town. They have so much less than what I'm like used to. And they're happy. <laughs> Hella happy, yeah, man. Yeah. And I'm just like, whoa, like this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. So that to me, the reason why I think it was my best year, my favorite year is because I learned so much about myself, so much about other people, so much about a culture mm -hmm. that I just never had the ability to branch out into before. Right. And then you played in Spain for the one year, right? Yeah. Eight months. Um, and then from Spain, did you play anywhere else after that? No. So actually, yeah. funny enough, um, just as playoffs were about to start, we're in first place. That was, that's when COVID happened, bro. That's oh, when COVID dude. Wow. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, yeah. So I mean, there's, no, there's, no point talk, there's no point talking about that, yeah, but that, yeah. that could have changed so much had that had you still played or won or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you you think you may still be playing pro had, had that stuff not happened? I honestly don't know. I truly don't know. The only thing that I really remember from it is 
I remember it coming onto the news and it was like, Italy is shutting down, yada, yada, yada. Spain's still okay. We have a team meeting outside of our gym, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and I just like asked the question, like, you know, I am, but I just ask questions. Yeah. It's just how I am. So I'm like, okay, well, what are you guys going to do if it does come here? Like, what's like, what's going to happen? Yeah. Well, what's the plan? Oh, uh, blah, blah. That's fine. Like, don't worry about it. Okay. But like, what if? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, you should have seen me. I was just adamant. Like, you know how I am. I'm just yeah, stubborn. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, okay, but let's just hold on here. Yeah. What, what if? if? It's fine. Don't worry about it. A week later, bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a week later, that's everything crazy. shut down, man. Everything shut down. No one believed it when it first happened. You know, that's the crazy, crazy. part. And then took over the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So you kind of just talked about a couple of different things there. So this question I have, you, I feel like you kind of answered, but not directly. Mm -hmm. So the game of basketball has taught us so many things in life and everyone's different in my opinion. Mm -hmm. What to you is like the most important thing that the game taught you? Oof. <laughs> I didn't know it was deep. <laughs> That's a, yeah, um, consistency, man. Okay. Consistency, the importance of consistency more than anything. I Working think. out, practice, like that type of consistent. Yeah. And what I mean by that is you can have confidence in yourself and you can believe you're like the greatest, all that kind of stuff. You're right. It's great. And belief in yourself is important. Don't like, I'm not discrediting that. But if you aren't consistent in the thing you do to the point where it doesn't even seem like work to you, I don't think it's possible to do anything that you want to achieve. Like, like that's the one thing that I learned. Like, again, you, you know how I am. I honestly never ever believed when I was in high school, when I was in university, even at the pro level, I never believed that I was the best, but I believed in the work that I did. Yeah, Like I believed in that. Like I was very, mm -hmm. very confident. I didn't ever think that was the most athletic. I could jump, I could, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, you know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I honestly never believed that was like the most athletic. I never believed that was the strongest. Definitely wasn't the tallest, um, wasn't the best shooter. And again, it just became, okay, if I am not the best in all of these things, what's the one thing I can be the best in? It's just mm -hmm. like being consistent, right? People aren't willing to get up at 5 a.m. like I was. People aren't, nah. aren't willing to, like go to 5 a.m., go to class, then go right back to the gym. Like people yeah. weren't willing to do that, yeah. but I was. Yeah. And then over time, I just felt like I started to notice, ooh, I'm doing these things and they can't keep up. Yeah. Right? It's just like you just notice these small things that the consistency of the work doesn't show in the moment, but then like years down the road, it's just like. You see it. Yeah, it you comes, see it. comes to light. Um, and that's also that's also the main thing you can control. Yeah, like you said, your your work ethic is what you control. Yeah, and I can vouch the fact that this this fool would be working out all the time, bro. <laughs> like literally all the time. I remember sometimes working out with you, and I'd be like sore for two three days, bro. <laughs> but seriously, no, I was crazy. I was crazy. But even even the fact, you know, um, obviously I'm around a lot of like basketball players and mm -hmm. just all over, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact that you can. Uh, understand and accept the fact that like what you just said of like you just knew you weren't you basically you just knew you weren't that nice yeah in in many categories yeah. <laughs> but you didn't care yeah you just like worked on what you could work on you got better in different aspects and you played five years you know what i mean it's like a lot of people wouldn't do that bro yeah or even just accept or acknowledge that they mm -hmm. would just try to still be the man um even though you know they're not yeah so anyways kudos to you for that thank that, you that's a huge thing yeah let's transition a little bit okay before we transition to like the the entrepreneur that you're becoming or you're already doing mm -hmm. i want to mm -hmm. ask you a question because i don't know if you've had any past businesses mm -hmm. have you had a past business or failure before starting the business you're working on right now no okay. um i've had i'd say like small stints of things okay. but in terms of like consistently being committed to something no i've just done again like the traditional job from from you can name it from being in a coal mine to being in a desk job <laughs> that's so random. right like <laughs> like so random so random but <laughs> i've just tried various different things and then again it came to a point where it's like okay well like what am i passionate about like like what like what mm -hmm. do i actually like care about doing and then if there is a way to make that into a business like what is it right so it just kind of just transitioned into that so tell me about what you're building right now. Yeah. Like what exactly are you building yeah. the name, the concept, get to everything? Get gritty. Yeah, let's get to it. Yeah. So right now I'm in the process of building a basketball school and the concept behind it basically comes from, again, like things that we just grew up with, right? Mm -hmm. Like like in Edmonton, Alberta, it was no secret that like we didn't have like the best basketball trainers when we were growing up. Yeah. It's not a secret. Yeah, it wasn't a real thing. No, no. People didn't care about basketball. It's just like something that you just did. Mm -hmm. Right. And so for me, like the passion that I have behind it is if no one's doing this right now, what is a easier way to allow all kids to play basketball? Because some kids like yourself, like myself, <clears throat> we have siblings, mm -hmm. we have a huge family. People can't afford it. Like that's just the reality. So how do you make it where it's something that, again, is smaller scale where everyone can do it, 
no matter if they have physical uh, disabilities or, or if they have low income family, anything like that, how do you make it so it's like everyone can be involved in the game of basketball and benefit from like the relationships, the, the, the training, the confidence that you can gain in yourself. Right. And so the school that I'm trying to build is based around that, right? We allow literally anyone from like five years old to 15 years old in our program. Skill level does not matter at all. And that's kind of like the beauty behind it is because you get to learn especially from my level that I played at, you learn like all the way back to you were a child when you couldn't dribble a basketball. <laughs> right. How do you teach those kids how to do it? How do you teach these kids how to like yeah. jump, run, like catch a basketball? How do you teach them how to Basic stuff. not be scared when a basketball comes your way? Like it's like, it's crazy, man, it's crazy, right? Like the concept in your mind to think about going back to that level of a child is like crazy, but it also makes you relearn the love that you have for the game right. at the same time. Refine that passion, yeah. Right, so that's like a small little snippet of what I do and the goal behind it again is just like to get into schools that's probably the first route that we want to take because if you can get into a school you can see what teachers are doing right you can see in their gym class how things are going right especially with the movement of of the world now things are becoming so technologically advanced that people don't like gym class people hate gym class really like, that's a thing like if you go into a school and like kids who are like seven years old don't want to do gym class they get recess for like 10 minutes interesting it's crazy it's just because you say because like technology is because of their phones. I, I I genuinely believe it's technology. I think that's probably the first thing. I think it's still. I mean, this is my opinion at least. <laughs> it's still a little bit of of you know what happened in COVID. Kids couldn't hang out with each other. Kids couldn't go outside. Kids, you know, they had to find different things to do. They got into gaming. Yeah, they got into all their phones. The iPads. screen time went up. The screen time went up, right? And so like, yeah. that's not a bad thing because they become you know so advanced in that aspect, but we forget how to use our bodies. And kids, again, at the age of like seven, don't know how to use their bodies, which is crazy to me. They just flailing around. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, yeah, like <laughs> like noodles. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, right? And, and so like, that, that's probably, I think the biggest thing for me is if you can get into a school and you can teach kids how to use their bodies, you can teach them how to, you know, have motor skills, confidence, right? And they just get better at basketball, you're already doing your job. Right. I'll be the first to tell you, like, I'm not trying to create D1 athletes. I'm not trying to create anyone who's going to post-secondary. But if I can help someone just gain confidence in themselves, connect with other human beings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And then at the same time, they just get better at basketball. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and when you told me the idea, that's the thing I like the most. Like, we talked about it, like, because mm -hmm. everyone's doing AAU and mm -hmm. training. And we have talked about this, too. Like, you don't want to be on the court your yeah. whole life training because what you're doing right now is different than training yeah. like full-time running through drills yeah. and demonstrations all that kind of stuff and to me like where sports lacking is what you're doing right now it's mm -hmm. like he like said just conf it's just like come play a sport learn how to conversate exactly meet some people yeah you know if you fun. score some baskets it's fine yeah but it's like just also just staying in shape because mm -hmm. i i do think like where tech is going bro and obviously like I, mean, I know you see it too you got family you got young kids like bro I, it's crazy the screen time and the stuff that they're exposed to now as opposed to when we grew up it's wild bro when we grew up we didn't have that let's be honest bro. Like, we didn't have that. we're outside playing yeah. for hours yeah we had no we had to be outside yeah because there was nothing else bro yeah. like, you gotta go play outside it's yeah. just like it's almost like you have to force them but i feel like that's why this is good because like i said it's mm -hmm. chill it's not about a scholarship mm -hmm. or making a pro player mm -hmm. nba it's just like you want to make better human beings yeah right and that's I, yeah. that's what i that's what i love about it so i know you got a water bottle here but like what's like the name what's the what's the name of the yeah the, yeah so school? right now uh the name of the company is hoot dream so i'll give it a small little snippet yeah, right plug that up there there you go there you go <laughs> <laughs> uh but we are transitioning into something that is a little bit more inclusive that again just encompasses like what we want to talk about for all aspects Right? Okay. So we're moving towards youth hoops, which is probably like our, our landing point on the name. That makes sense. Just because again, like it isn't about like the basketball aspect. It's more about the kids. And like if the name can encompass that, I think that's the best way to go about things. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot of stuff planned for this year. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. That's exciting, bro, to see you go through this. Because technically, like you said, this is technically the first entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. So there will be ups and downs. There'll be a lot of learnings, but like you're still young. So it's, it's going to be a great experience for you, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to tie some things back to basketball just because obviously like we've learned a lot through basketball, right? Yeah. So the first thing is you're building a team. You kind of, you've mentioned this last time too. You're building a team. Mm -hmm. You're bringing on some people that maybe aren't basketball players. Maybe some are basketball players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Teamwork's a huge part of basketball, right? So... Yeah. when you're building out now you're like the gm essentially you're the coach <laughs> yeah. right you're like how eric used to be as you're building your team and your roster and putting them together like what are the things you're looking for 
as you build out this, you know, kind of your dream team, I guess. Yeah, uh, you kind of touched on it. So the, so the cool part of it is we're not doing it with anyone that's like specifically just an athlete or specifically someone that was like really good at basketball. Right. Because that again limits it to this is how all of us think and all of us being athletes, right? Mm -hmm. So the main aspect to it is, are you good with kids? Do you learn quickly? And then what's your willingness to continuously connect with the kids? Because I'm not gonna lie, it's it's, it's not easy every single day. Like sometimes no. you have, you know, like kids that they have stuff going on outside of basketball. They come into our program for an hour and they're just upset. Like the week before they're they're great. Like they're, yeah, you know, yeah. like they're just bouncing around. Yeah. And some, something happened, you have no idea what happened, mm -hmm. but they react. Right. And then that reaction can go anywhere from slamming a basketball, like that's the smallest little thing, to putting their head down. Or like obviously on the rare occasion, like they start to try and fight someone. So you gotta you gotta be able to stop those in the moment and recognize that those things are not what a kid just inhabitably does. It's mm -hmm. what they learn. Right. So it's how they learn how to deal with their emotions. Right. And so like if you can come into a program and you're good with kids, you're able to connect with them, you're able to have fun with them, and you're able to just like talk to them, that's what we look for. Because then at least that way. Again, like let's say for example, you're in our you're you're in our program, right? And something happens to you outside of life that again, I have no idea about. Like I have no idea. I come in here super happy, and you come in here appearing to be happy, and then right. something happens, something, it's yeah. a snap, mm -hmm. right? I, I have to have the ability to instead of getting upset with you or instead of like, um, like punishing you or anything like that, I have to have the ability to like sit you down and be like, okay, like what's going on. Like I know that this yeah. is not how you are. Like it's, what's like what's going on? Yeah, it's like almost being like a big brother, big yeah. sister type thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and so again, the thought process in the, in that is like if you can if you can teach kids at a very very young age, like it's not okay to hit. It's not okay to like just just be throwing temper tantrums. And then years down the road, they remember that. Even if it's like a small little snippet, they remember that you've done your job. Yeah, make right? that small impact on them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and. Again, no discredit to, you know, people who play basketball. Not everyone is built for that. Not every athlete is built for that. 100% not. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it's a different like, yeah, uh, yeah. skill or something, whatever yeah, you want to yeah. call it. Exactly. So like for our team, you can't come into youth hoops, hoop dreams, <laughs> um, and just like roll with the punches and just teach them basketball if you can't connect with them, if you can't talk to them. Mm -hmm. like, like it's not going to work. Yeah. Right. That's just our reality. Yeah. If you know nothing about basketball, but you can connect with kids, we can teach you how to like do the drills or what to watch for. Like that's easy. Right. It's like, you know, couple steps, couple focuses for layups. Are they doing the proper footwork? Stop it in the moment. Okay? Right. As opposed to again, if you see a temper tantrum, if you see something going on and you just let it happen, now we're failing. I like that, bro. Yeah. It's like, if it was very different from hearing like a basketball trainer, how they would yeah. speak about yeah. it, which is good though, because you want to have that clear separation yeah. of what you're building, right? Exactly. Um, has it just been one year? Two years. Two so years. So we started off very, very slow. It was okay. very, very quiet, very low key. And again, the thought process was to just make sure that we're getting all our ducks in order. Right. Like we're just making sure that again, like everything that we do, we do with the reason behind it. Any mistakes that we make, we learn from those mistakes early. And then that way, again, now as we're trying to blow up and trying to continue to get our brand out, now it's a little bit easier because we know certain mistakes and certain things that we right. have to deal with. Yep. Right. So. Um. So in the in the two years, have you already experienced some highs and lows? Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh yeah. For sure. A lot of highs, a lot of lows. Can we? Can we? I don't know what you're comfortable talking about. Can we yeah. touch on some of the lows that you ex experienced in the yeah. first two years? Um. Probably the most obvious low that I would say is you can't expect people to just sign up to something that like you have a huge vision behind. Like it takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes mm -hmm. time. And you have to, and you have to, again, that consistency helps with that belief. Like I can believe in it all I want, but if I'm not consistent in it, then yeah. I'm, I really don't believe in it. Yeah. And no one else will believe in it either. Right. Yeah. And so probably like the, the biggest failure that we, well, I mean, struggle that we had so far is our first year, I think we had like three sessions going on. And in those three sessions, like you have our capacity is 12 to 15, depending on like the age group. Right. If you have like five to sevens, it's probably like 10. 10 to 12 right. are hectic <laughs> <laughs> right but uh anywhere from that 8 to 14 15 age range age gap we have like 15 spots available and so in our thought process it was like okay let's just open up a couple classes see how it goes go from there mm -hmm. right and we had maybe one out of the three that was like consistently full and by full i mean like 10. okay so, you know, over the break even. At the same time, you had two other classes that are like one to two kids. So now again, it's, a ten, it's a 10 week season, right? One to two kids, you do the math, you're not 
you know, you're not doing well on that. Right. Right. It's almost a loss probably. For sure a loss, okay, for sure. Yeah. And so you realize then it's like, okay, well, is it something that we're doing? Is it something that, you know, like, are we not getting our word out? Are we, you know, right. are we not keeping the kids happy? Like just what's happening? And again, that consistency is now like, okay, let's just try and keep it open. Let's see what happens. And let's just do all that we can control because we can't control parents signing up. We can't control if they spread our word or not. All we can control is if we have a safe space for the kids, mm. ha make them have fun. And then from there on, eventually you have to believe that like word will spread. Right. And that was like a very, very tough lesson for me, especially. I think like for me, the biggest challenge to it was trying to understand that just because you've done certain things and you'd be great to learn under, doesn't mean that people just immediately sign up. Definitely, bro. <laughs> yeah. like, people, like people don't just sign up just because of the no. fact that you've done, you've, you've, you've done things. No. Like that's just not how it works, mm -mm. right? Even for NBA players, that's not how it works, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and and like, that was a learning lesson for me, I'll be honest. And I think in our first two years, if we had just like opened up right away and put out, you know, all of our stuff, it would have been a little bit scarier as opposed to, okay, let's learn the ropes, let's see how it goes. Now that I'm mm -hmm. more comfortable with that feeling of loss or feeling of, you know, the struggle, now jump off the rope or jump off the bridge. Or yeah, you just jump it. off the deep end and yeah. just experiment. So that's good. Is that basically what you're saying is you have these group of kids, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever, the loss is the loss, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, everyone is going to go through some losses. You have to, yeah. Tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong, right? What you're basically saying is that you, instead of focusing on anything else on the outside, you just focus on the 10 to 12 kids that are in there, make sure they had the best experience possible. Yeah. Because you know that they're going to go tell their parents or they're going to go tell their friends and the focus is just on them. Yeah. Right. And for that time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Making them, and I'm sure that's what, ha is that what happened? Like yeah. those yeah. kids maybe went back and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk to parents <laughs> yeah. and kids. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, to put the, like the best perspective on it, we had three camps this summer. This summer? Yeah. Okay. And so the capacity for these camps was like 40 kids, 40 kids for three camps, it's 120 kids throughout the whole summer. Okay. Right. Not just for our program. We did a lot of stuff with Edmonton Stingers. We did a lot of stuff with the Oilers at the Ice District okay. as well. Cool. But for our specific camps, we had 40 spots open. And one of our camps, we had 12 kids, 12 out of 40. Okay. Right. And so again, you talk about that loss, but it came down to a point where it's like me with my team, you have a choice. You either perform the exact same way that you would if you had 40 kids mm -hmm. or you essentially, you know, don't do anything or don't put your heart into it. And then you let those 12 kids down. Like, which is, which like, is way worse. Which, which is way worse. <laughs> way worse. Like you really think about that? Like yeah. that's, that's deep to do, man. Like, yeah. like if you really think about what you're trying to do. So it again becomes like, to be honest, do you care about the 40 kids and the money? Or do you just care about these 12 kids? Like that's actually the reality. Right. Like, you know, if we're being honest. And so it's like, now it's like, okay, regardless of what I, you know, like the expectation that I, that I, that I wanted to, to achieve mm -hmm. of having, you know, the camp full, obviously, it now becomes what do you care about? And what are you actually trying to do? And you have to constantly like shut down your ego. Like it's a lot of like, mm, this is not what I'm about, <laughs> right? Yeah, constantly, constantly. Yeah. And so it's again, like talk about that struggle. It's like that struggle is being okay with, you got the word out, you did the advertisements. It's also our first summer doing summer camps, like multiple mm -hmm. summer camps. You have to be okay with this being the baseline and just try and grow. And just going up from, yeah, just going up from there, yeah. right? Because I think the cool thing is, I, I remember seeing the stingers one well, now that you brought it up at mm -hmm. the at the ice district. Mm -hmm. Those are just, those are all good opportunities, though, right? Exposure, mm -hmm. marketing, exactly. connecting with other people. I'm assuming, hopefully, time with the stingers helps you guys out too. Mm -hmm. But you're only year two. Yeah, that's what I always tell people, bro. Yeah. Some people tell me oh, only year you, two, bro. Year one was a ground line, bro. Wait till you get to year seven, then let's <laughs> let's talk. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. there's just so much you're gonna learn and change, right? Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, like, I mean, I personally don't know anyone else doing this specific. Mm -hmm. I would call. I wouldn't say it's like a niche, but it kind of like is like a niche. Yeah, because your focus is not like what everyone else is. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's like necessarily like a big blueprint or like a big, you know, thing to follow. Yeah, or, or think, maybe there is. I think uh, probably across the world, like people are trying to do it. I'm sure even in the city, people are you know, possibly trying to do it. Right. I think at the end of the day, it's it's more so for me specifically, I, there's not like a perfect blueprint to follow. There's not an ideal structure to, to build off of. So you're just, again, constantly learning. Yeah. Constantly. So speaking with all this stuff, we're talking about failures, the mm -hmm. business side, obviously like in a perfect world too, your business would have taken off already and you'd yeah. be like a millionaire. That's just like what we all <laughs> yeah. want. Every entrepreneur wants that, right? Yeah, of course. So we live in a world that's full of instant gratification. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter, likes, retweets, you know, all that stuff. You just get, you get the high of, oh shit, you know, someone liked it. Yeah. So for you knowing that, you know, how important is it for you like to, I, it sounds cliche, but like kind of trusting the process and understand that it is going to be like a little bit of a longer game. Yeah, uh, it's really important for sure. I'd say the thing that helps me the most 
again, was the journey that I had in basketball. As I said to you, like, I never thought I was going to be crazy. I, like, I always, that, that was my dream, obviously, but I never really thought right. that. Like, you know, it's just, it's just, just what I wanted to do. And that was my escape from certain things, right? That was just my escape. And so, like at McEwen, same thing, five years. Spent five years there. Never won anything crazy. But it also opened up my life to pro basketball, right? So it's like, okay, I spent five years, five years, what people would call in the struggle, in the, in, in the mud. Right, because you're not winning. Uh, right, and, and, definitely uh, is. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. it's like, I did that for five years and then it brought me pro. Okay, interesting. As I said, my first year, pro, more L's than I've ever taken in my <laughs> life, bro. <laughs> more and, L's and than I've ever, to get ever taken. It's tough, mm -hmm. man. Like, it's tough because it becomes like, it just became, it just became like, is this the norm? And if it's not the norm, okay, well, how do I get my mindset out of this? Because that's all I'm experiencing right now, mm -hmm. right? And so again, have the opportunity to quit move on with your life or go back for another one. I went back, things got better, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, okay, so to me, the way that my life has showed me at least, it's almost like every struggle that I've went through has brought me something better. It's only it's only made me strong, it's brought me something better. So like this right now, I can't, I don't know what's gonna happen from it, but there's a sense <laughs> of, there's a, there's a sense of, even though it's the unknown, there's a sense of security in the fact that like, I'm comfortable being okay in that like struggle period yeah knowing that it's going to come better it's, it's yeah. going to get better every single time so hey bro like i always told you like it's so important to have that mindset yeah and <laughs> i always i think i told you this multiple times before like the way you think is different um the way you present yourself is different Thank from you. obviously not even just when i knew you before just in general mm -hmm. i think that's like going to be a testament to like how far you go and be an entrepreneur because like as you know like, you're two years in yep but like you i can only imagine i think you're probably assuming like it's going to not get harder, but it's gonna become more and more. For sure. And if the program grows, that means you're taking on more responsibilities, you're hiring, you know what I mean? Everything's just gonna escalate. Hiring, yeah. So it's gonna be fun and you're passionate about it, but like, it's just gonna keep building up. Yeah. So to understand that the struggles is fine, like, thing I always tell people is like, talk to so many entrepreneurs, like, sometimes when they have that first struggle, you know what happens, right? They give up. To quit. Yeah, everyone quits, yeah. To quit, bro, and it's like, yeah. it's crazy to me, because like some people I feel like could be such great entrepreneurs, but like, some people can't get over the hump of mm -hmm. like the mental side. And that's why I always tell people, bro, like sports is so important. Oh, for sure. I feel like it's so important, man. Oof, like for sure. This, like I said, even you don't have to play college pro. Honestly, in my opinion, you don't have to. No. It's just like the understanding of, like you said, what you're doing, the teamwork, like playing in a team, playing these kids games, you play in basketball, mm -hmm. like it all helps so much, you yeah. know? And I feel like I, you see the people without sports too, and they always say, oh, man, I wish I played. Yeah. You know? And, and, and like, you probably experienced the same thing. Like, like, I actually genuinely want to ask you as well because yeah. at the end of the day, it's very similar. Like, you, you, you played at McEwen with me to the testament of you don't have to play pro. Right. Like, you've experienced the lows as well. Yeah. And how has it, like, helped you? Because at the end of the day, like, yeah. like, I think for me specifically, again, as I said, like, there's days you obviously understand that, like, things aren't going well and you can question it. I think it's mm -hmm. okay to question yourself. That, like, that's kind of normal. Yeah. If you don't question yourself. Yeah. <laughs> But it's like, how do you even deal with the fact that like, yes, it gets harder, but there's still benefits from that struggle. Yeah. How I do you like, deal with that? I feel like I really saw that in my second year. Mm. So my first year was tough because I was just, a, I was, first of all, everyone knows I was just a bench warmer, but I was like, I walked on, mm -hmm. didn't expect to do anything. Then I became close with everyone. I felt like I just became close with everyone. Mm -hmm. Like we had good relationships and mm -hmm. I felt like, I definitely was older than you guys, but not that old. But I feel like second year, we started to like build relationships like in groups and mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started to see like, oh, cause first year I, I complained a lot. I was like, you know, you play, play men's league, you know, I just think you're nice, right? And then, <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, bro, you just think you're nice. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you're actually not nice. I definitely wasn't nice in college. Um, but second year I started building these relationships and I started to see like, oh man, like this is, I was having more fun. Mm -hmm going to Costco with Tommy, mm -hmm. you know, and buying, bringing back yeah. Nutella for everyone. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I started seeing, man, that's what, and then obviously like having the business with Sunny stuff too. I started to see like that picture is so much bigger mm -hmm. than getting 10 minutes or 20 minutes or starting in a basketball game. It was more like the com camaraderie and the relationships, you know, keeping with you guys. Yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. But it was tough, mm -hmm. you know, so, but like basketball's fun, man. Like, so wait, so how does that translate to uh, like the way you've done business at least? uh how did how did basketball or just those those, those I think, seasons I think, I think just that lesson like that lesson that you spoke on even like going through you know 
your first year not getting too many minutes and then you realize okay well it's not actually about that you clearly like the relationships yeah it's so like how does that translate it to like the business world i for think you? it's like the same thing of like even when we first started in the lab is like i asked that question about instant gratification mm -hmm. I, I just i thought and in you know, the lab was not my first company but it was my first time going to build something bigger than myself mm -hmm. i thought we were going to get that instant gratification and it's that that type of lesson <laughs> i just told you about like those are the types of moments where i was humbled I humbled myself and yeah. learned like it doesn't matter if it's me, Dev, whoever's helping us, like it's gonna be a grind regardless. Yep. And it's really just how you look at the opportunity to yep. right? Um, so I, I just feel like those types of moments and like, honestly, bro, like being the guy who uh, sat on the bench for two years or three years or whatever, like I feel like I learned how to be more of a leader too. Like just trying to put, trying to like gas, you know, push guys the right way or like work out with guys in the morning or like push people. I feel like that stuff helped me. Yeah understand that it's like it's always bigger there's always yeah. something you can do as opposed to complain that's such a good way to put it like I, yeah yeah you have to follow before you can lead 100 sure. percent, for sure 100 percent. and and yeah i definitely would yeah. not be like the leader i am today obviously the businesses have helped but like just with some of these experiences i had throughout it mm -hmm. even just like talks i'd have behind the scenes with eric or like agp or whatever like the time was that the people who were there at that time mm -hmm. like those things like really help you know to understand that there's a bigger perspective there's something that you're seeing but that person over there is not seeing the same thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. How do you find the balance in between, or how do you connect the dots there? Yeah, yeah. You know, but as a young kid, I said, <laughs> that's hard. You were eighteen. I think I was like 21, 22. I don't think I'm only a couple years older than you, mm -hmm. so it wasn't like I was like a grown man. Yeah, I'm still like learning. I'm still trying to party <laughs> with you guys. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> we're still trying to have a good yeah, time. No, so, facts. Yeah, man, I wouldn't change that. Honestly, bro, I always say to this day, like I'm, I'm so happy that I just took that risk and did it because mm -hmm. I first of all, I wouldn't have known any of you guys. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have just had that experience of like, what was it like to play that level and go through the ups and downs with other people? Because it's, mm -hmm. also, it's also also really tough sitting on the bench and watching you guys struggle because you guys were so young. Mm -hmm. And not that I could have helped or done anything, but like it, it's just different. Like you see you guys struggle, it's like, damn, like. You just care. I just care, bro. You just care, Like, yeah. you know, we, when, we when you lose those games, like, damn, I cared. Or like, you missed that shot. I'm like, damn. Like I seen Denzel hit that shot like mm -hmm. in the morning. He should hit, you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's yeah. that's how it felt. Trust so. me, I uh, trust me, I know. <laughs> and 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 it, it's so funny that you say that, even even just because I think like that's the lesson that I learned when I started to go play pro. Like that's what I learned. Right. Is again, like it's not about me. It's it, and the tough part for me is again, you you play with me, so my mentality when I'm on the court is very different from who I am as a person, because on the court. I'll do anything it takes to win, bro. I don't care. Yeah, I know that. I know that. I don't care. I don't care. Like if I have to take a bad shot that I've practiced multiple times, yeah. I'll do it. Like yeah. I, I don't care. Yeah. Right. But the crazy thing is, is again, when I went to go play pro, nobody cares, bro. Yeah. Like it's not just me that doesn't get no. nobody cares, no one cares bro. bro. And so, like to your point, that's when I got my first experience being humbled and and, and recognizing. Like I might be on the bench a lot and I might be watching these guys in the clutch, but at the end of the day, these are things that I've seen these guys do. I know that they can mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like, it just translated, yeah, to be honest with you, it just translated even to now, like even in the coaching aspect that I spent with the Stingers this summer. Right. Oh man, watching those guys play, <laughs> Like in the clutch, I'll just be on the bench like this and I'll just, I have to stand up, bro. I have to stand up because <laughs> I'm just like so into the game. Yeah, yeah. And I just know what yeah. these guys can do. And it's just like, it's so hard to watch and like stay composed. Like, I don't know how coaches do it, bro. Yeah. That's why it, I, it's yeah. tough. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. I know it. how you feel because you, you're excited. You, yeah. you know, it's like one of your boys is playing, but like coaches are just chilling there. Like, yeah. like, like, I don't know how they do it, bro. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I don't know, bro. That's that takes that's like a different mentality. Um, For sure. I had a couple more things. So something I'm big on is like manifestation mm -hmm. or, or visualization. Same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I I feel like you are similar. Or oh yeah, I I just assume, yeah, bro. Pretty similar. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have an example of like maybe they're the same or maybe they're different? Like mm -hmm. one example of manifestation for like the basketball side of you, and then maybe something you're doing a visualization or manifestation for the business side now. Yeah. The basketball side, I think the only thing I can speak towards is again that poster that I had as a child. Okay, yeah. That's that's, that's when you were like, a kid and you that, said you want to play pro in yeah, Spain. That's yeah. like the most obvious thing. That's, yeah, that's good. Um, because at the end of the day, like I didn't know how I was going to get there. I just knew that I wanted to get there, mm -hmm. right? And like you can ask anybody from my childhood, from university, you know as well. Like there was never a question of like if I wanted to do anything else, it was like pro basketball. Like that's what I wanted to do. Yep. Like I didn't have any doubt in it. There was no if ands or buts that was what i was doing right right 
didn't know how I was going to do it. I just knew I was, I was going to do it. I just knew. <laughs> um, but from the business side of things, it's now morphed into there's a vision that I want to create in terms of all of us. And by all of us, I mean like the team and how we step into a gym and, you know, parents can come in, the gym's packed, stuff like that. And they see our program and not only our program, they see like our banners and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Just like, just like a whole, a whole bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. I have this just envisioned in my head. And the image that, that you, that you kind of get from that is like, these guys care, like they care. Like right. it's very clear. Like you walk into a gym and you can feel the energy, like they care. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I honestly have envisioned for quite some time. Now, do I know when it's going to happen? No. That's the whole no fun. Of, that's the fun of it. Right. right? But like, yeah. I can see a clear vision in my head of people walking in, into a gym and they see our banners, they see our coaches, they see a whole bunch of things and I'm supervising and I'm just like going around the whole thing, talking to certain parents and like- just, Right, exactly, you know, which just, is just, important just, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then even just like, just listening to how they see our program mm-hmm. as well. And like the overall consensus is just like, these guys care. Yeah. Like they're doing something that's different because they care. Like it's not about like the basketball. Yeah. Right, so I think that's something that I'm continuously trying to manifest, continuously trying to uh, bring into fruition. From sure. experience, if you get the parents to say that, I know that that's how you become create a winning program. Yeah, that's just the oh he cares. Mm-hmm. Then they, you have them. Yeah, you have them locked in like yeah. forever. You know, because uh, most yeah. people just don't, bro. Yeah. Okay. Last this I got two quick things. Mm-hmm. Other day we chopped it up a little bit, and you were kind of talking about yoga, and how yoga has <laughs> heavily impacted your life, right? Can you just explain that? Like, how has yoga actually oh, changed your man. life for the better? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't even know how to quickly sum it up, to be honest with you. I really don't. <laughs> I feel like, uh, you know when, you know when, like, like, like older days or like the 70s or the 80s or whatever, people are just like, there's, there's, there's a mentality of like a hippie and like what a hippie looks like, but then there's also just like that business side of people as well. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's taught me how to not take life so serious. Like, it made me realize how serious I was all the time, bro. Yeah. And, like, that's a good thing because, obviously, you know, I put my goals first, stuff like that, which is awesome. But sometimes that over-seriousness creates, like, excess stress that I just didn't need. Mm -hmm. And, like, I love basketball, but also it destroys your body. It it destroys your body. Yeah, especially how you play. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And you work out twice a day. Yeah, it, like, destroys your body. So, like, for me, to be honest with you, after I stopped playing, I, I couldn't move, bro. I couldn't move, man. Like, I, That's crazy. To sit down on a toilet seat <laughs> might be too much information, but like it was hard, bro. Like the knees were hurting. Everything was hurting, yeah, you know? Aching, yeah. And then, yeah, I started yoga uh, a year ago, as I told you, mm-hmm. right? And just the transformation it made to my body came first. Right. Started to get like a little more limber, moving around a little bit. I'm like, okay, interesting. You go to like a run and you don't realize how much like less sore you are. Okay, interesting. <laughs> But then the more that you do it, the more consistent you stay with it, you realize it's more of like a mental game more than anything mm-hmm. else. Um, like no matter how, t- how many times you go and how many times you expect to get better at something, you're like quickly humbled, bro. Yep. Quickly. And I think for me again, like that's just something that I'm not like carrying into my life. Um, it's not easy, not easy by any, by any means. Definitely not. There's a, there's a certain level of calmness that is now bringing into my life from yoga that comes from like releasing expectations constantly, mm-hmm. like releasing my ego constantly. It's a very hard thing to do, like very, very hard thing to hard. do. Even, even hearing <laughs> but it I'm sounds always hard. Che- I'm, I'm always constantly checking myself. Like, is this okay? Like, is this like the best thing to do? Like, is, is this the smartest thing to do? Um, is this the best way to move forward? Like, I'm constantly trying to do that to myself. Right. Which is, you know. Yeah. That's good, bro. Kind of like a pendulum, but yeah. It, it'd be a self-improvement. Yeah. You're trying to push yourself forward, right? To, yeah. For, to be a better person, which is great. Um, you're only two years in as an entrepreneur, so you're still very young. There's yeah. a long way to Hell go. Young. <laughs> but still, because you're young, a lot of people would be able to connect with you on a different level, right? Mm-hmm. Especially being in sports, pro athlete, all that kind of good stuff. So I would like to end off with this question. Basically, mm-hmm. like, what piece of advice would you give to an entrepreneur coming up, no matter what business they're trying to build, just mm-hmm. any type of piece of advice to help them get started or to keep going or to push through, just anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I think probably the most important thing more than anything is just the piece that I touched on. Obviously, believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. But understand that you being consistent will improve that belief in yourself. Mm-hmm. Like that, it's just consistency. That's it. It's really, it's really all it takes. No, obviously it's harder, you know, harder said than done. <laughs> but but the days where you don't feel like doing it, you you, you get up and- Those are the days <clears throat> you have to do it. You have to do it. Yeah. 
the days where you do feel like doing it go a little bit harder yeah right yeah but the days where you don't just be consistent enough to like have a certain ground base for me it, it's like everything i did in basketball i now try and translate to like the now yeah so like for me like a like a day off for me was going to the gym for two hours right like that was a day off for me you're still working so yeah. again like that's what i do now is like the day where i don't feel like doing anything i'll spend two hours and i'll just make sure that like that two hours is like i use a google timer on my uh, phone or or, yeah. or or laptop and i just put the start button on it stopwatch right and i just make sure that like Getting, two hours know. is clocked right so that no matter what i do at least i feel like i did something because it's like two hours that's logged well, look, I could feel like I could keep talking about some certain, some certain things, yeah. but it's almost been an hour. So I appreciate you coming on. And uh, this is your first, like, not, this is not really like a podcast, but the first time creating content yeah. officially, right? Yeah. So I appreciate you doing that with me, bro. And thank you. We, no. need to do, we need to do more, right? Keep, keep, keep the banter going. Let's see it. Let's actually follow your journey and see, like, where it takes you in the next couple of years. Yeah, please. That'd be and, awesome. Uh, and document it so people can learn from it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, for real.